I'd like to add alfalfa cubes to my horse's diet, but I'm concerned over blister beetle toxicity. Are hay cubes just as likely to carry blister beetles? And if so, how can you tell which are the good ones to buy? Thanks. It's a great question, and I feel um, maybe naive because Obviously, I'm aware of blister beetles, like oh, alfalfa hay, yeah. and just never worried about buying cubes or pellets or any other version of them. I just assumed they were quality made. I was thinking the same thing when I read this question <laughs> earlier. Like, I, was like, I, was like, I, thought, I was like, "Oopsies!" <laughs> so this answer is for all of us. Um, so blister beetles. Okay, I thought I'm from Illinois. Mm -hmm. And we're in Massachusetts. Yes. Now. And I don't know what you think about them, but I always thought they were a Western state problem, mm -hmm. and I didn't have to worry about it. Turns out, blister beetles are found throughout the U.S. Oh. And they're more common in the East and the South. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. We, we would have failed. Thank you for course. asking this question, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a couple different species of blister beetles, and the one that is most toxic is the three-striped blister beetle. That does sound pretty intense. It does, and but also easy to recognize them, mm -hmm. right? Because one of the things we'll talk about is you should in, look inspect your hay, mm -hmm. if okay. it, not the hay cubes and pellets, but actual just hay. Um, so they produce a substance called cantharidin. That's the toxic agent, and it's it's quite toxic to horses and other species. But horses seem to be particularly sensitive mm -hmm. to it. Um, and blister beetle, but with the way it gets its name is. It can blister the, the tongue, the mouth. One of the first signs is horses that don't normally play in their water. Mm. Because it, you can imagine it makes their mouth feel better. It's if you've got blisters and ulcers and things, that they dunk their head in the water and they aggressively play and splash. You feel so, like something's going on there. That's right, yeah. that's right. So that's one of those things, reasons why you have to know your own horse. Um, but it, it uh, really creates that same blistering and ulcer effect throughout the GI system. Oh, really? So bloody diarrhea is another sign. Oh, A geez. colic is probably the first sign yep. you may see. And it does the same damage to the renal or the urinary tract, to the kidneys. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so you can see bloody urine. It can kill a horse. If you get a, if you get a, a large amount of blister beetles in there, or the cantharidin, in the toxic principle, it can kill a horse in as little as like six hours. Six hours? Yeah. Yeah, so if, you, the, if you're in an area and you're feeding alfalfa, you have to recognize the signs and you have to call your vet. Now, mm. because colic is one of the first signs, and we're calling our vet about colic anyway, yeah. you know, as long as you follow that principle, you're probably okay. Yeah. So um, we talked about the signs. Things an alfalfa buyer should do is know the supplier. Mm -hmm. So don't just buy alfalfa from anybody because it's got to be quality. Um, ask what precautions they took to avoid the presence of bleeder, blister beetles in the forage. And for example, um, I learned that if you harvest your alfalfa before it blooms, okay. it will be less likely to have blister beetles in them. Mm -hmm. If you, your first cutting is, if you can get it done, weather permitting, before May, mm -hmm. and then they, they tend to emerge from the ground in June, July, and August. So if you get your hay before June and after August. You have a better exactly. likelihood. Exactly. Not, I mean, zero, but better. Better. Yeah. Um, so we talked about this earlier. Inspect the hay before feeding, mm -hmm. and you look for that three-striped three -striped blister beetle. That is a little bit hard to say. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> And then know that science of blister beetle poisoning. Now, I did find one company that has uh, pr produces hay, alfalfa hay nationwide, and has a pretty extensive um, quality program for ensuring that their cubes and pellets don't have blister beetles oh, okay. in them. Here's one more scary factoid: it's not just the cantharidin is not just in the beetle that's themselves but it can be released into the hay. And so if you even if you inspect and there's no blister yeah. beetle bodies, there can still be the cantharidin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So anyway, this is what this That's company says. That's giving good news on that one. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and read their name because I'm reading this verbatim from their website, and I think that they do, are doing such a good job, they deserve the credit. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, from harvest, harvesting and to manufacturing perspectives, Stanley, you heard of Stanley, we yeah, sell the absolutely. apple berry cookies, has well-established QA processes at their farms, 
production facilities and distribution centers to detect and eliminate insect infestations. Furthermore, Stanley's quality assurance personnel continue to be diligent and regularly contact the University of Idaho Extension offices in each county near their forage sources. So see, they contact, even they contact their um, county Forward. extension office. And then um, they harvest their forage before abundant blooms exist to provide high quality, high protein products and cut down on pests. Also, and I thought this part was really cool, Stanley Farm personnel scout fields seven to eight days prior to harvest to ensure that pests of all kinds are not present. These three striped blister beetles tend to, like if there's one adult here and there in the hay, it might not be so bad, but this insect swarms. Mm. And so if a swarm gets trapped into the alfalfa on when it's harvested, when it's cut, that's when you run into problems. Yeah. So by, by walking the fields right before they harvest. To make sure. Yeah, that was really good practice. So that's, that's my answer to how can you make sure that the product you're feeding is, is quality. And to your point, Stanley does do a great job. We do sell some of their mm -hmm. treats and things like mm -hmm. that. So. so if you stick with a reputable, um, recognized uh, brand, then I think you're in great shape.